Well, good morning, guys. Um, for our missions moment this morning, we are something a little bit uh, different than our normal rhythm and routine. So many of you guys have heard by now that we sent a team of students on a pretty unique mission trip uh, several weeks ago to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We have had quite a few questions um, from the church, good, healthy questions about that trip. And and so we wanted to take a little bit of time this morning to set aside to communicate with the church that sent us on that trip what we were doing, um, what the work looked like, why we did what we did, and then how that trip has stirred in the hearts of our students, growing us in closer relationship with Christ. And so I've got a few students I want to invite up to the stage with me. Michaela Blair Holden, would you guys like to work your way on up? Could you guys help me encourage them as they head up to the <laughs> stage? You guys can grab a seat anywhere that you'd like out of the three options we have for you. And so I'm um, just starting out with the first question for those in the room that may not have the details. Can I get a few of you guys to share what our mission project looked like this week, what the details of it were, what exactly we were doing in Kensington, Philadelphia? And you guys can grab that microphone right there to use to share. Okay, um, we went there and we were told that we were going to do construction. We all packed construction clothes. Um, we showed up in those construction clothes and they handed us trash bags, pickers, and gloves. And we all thought, okay, clean up trash. We got that. We weren't there cleaning up trash. We were given that as a disguise. We went out on probably one of the most drug-exposed places that in probably the world. And it was rough. It was really rough. And we weren't there to clean up the trash. We were cleaning up people who needed help. And not even cleaning them up, but trying to show them that there was a better way to do this life. And... We were there, and we were just doing so much that we never thought we'd be thrown into, and we were definitely thrown into it. So we worked with an organization called the Philly Dream Center, and they took us out one day on the streets of Kensington, and we picked up trash and just talked to people and... Um, trying to make some relationships with the people to reach them where they were and encourage them in um, the place that they were and the um, just try to tell them not to turn to certain things that they were turning to to try to point them towards Jesus. We were really just out there just to share the hope of the gospel. Like that was our whole job. That was our most important thing we had to do out there. For those of you guys that aren't familiar with that area, so Kensington's favorite or um, famous for an open-air drug market. And so when I say drugs, you can fill in the blank on what that means. But uh, we learned during our time there, it's legal to have them, it's legal to use them, legal to use them in public. Um, it's such, a, such an issue in that area, and the addiction runs so deep um, that that's the only way the system can handle um, that. And so our team was very much on the front lines um, of that work dealing with that. Um, and so I'm curious to hear from you guys and your hearts. Um, all of us knew we were going to be near that. None of us realized until we got there how close and personal we were going to be. I remember pulling up on the bus the first day. They'd given us some training, told us what not to do, um, ran through the important safety stuff with us. We pulled up in the bus and all looked out the window and saw um, firsthand exactly what life looked like in that area. And I I'm curious from you guys. So at one point, you all made the decision to get off the safety of the bus and engage with that. There was even a moment where they gave us some options to stay on a food truck and ease into that a little bit. Um, but all 15 of our team members um, were eager to dive right in. I'm curious to you guys, why, why did you choose to engage that community? Why were you eager to jump right in? Can you help explain the heart behind the why for this trip? So when he says training, the training they give, gave us was basically um, teaching us kind of the safety things of it. And when I had heard that, I was like, oh, yeah, right. We're going to see maybe a couple people out there doing that. I got on that bus. We started driving, and I was like, yeah, I still don't see the people. We, we saw the people once we turned that corner. And honestly, 
completely honest right now. The only reason I got off that bus is because John Gosnell got off that bus. And I was like, if he's going and he's my safety, I'm leaving with him. And let me tell you, the next couple of days, I was excited to get off that bus. And I realized God didn't put us there to really fall back into the safety part of it. We were put there to share the gospel. And in that moment, honestly, if John Gosnell wasn't there, I wouldn't have got off that bus. And so whenever the next couple of days, I was like, you know what? The only safety we need is Jesus Christ. And so that really brought my getting off the bus experience a little better. And it was, it was rough the first couple of days. But after that, I think we all were really excited to go into that part. And we were excited to share the gospel. So knowing that there had been a lot of prayer beforehand going into this trip and knowing that um, God had sent us, this, isn't, this wasn't just some random thing that we were doing, that definitely was a good push to know that God wanted us to be there. And um, with the Great Commission, God telling us to go and make disciples and point other people to him, that was an encouragement knowing, like, God wants us to do this, so we're going to go out and do it. So, um I feel like I just felt really safe with our team, and we knew Jesus had our back. And these people needed Jesus. It wasn't like we were getting off the bus just to go clean up trash. Like, these people needed to hear about the gospel. Can you guys, I think it would be helpful for the church to hear. So, as a result of the work that we did in Kensington, how did God grow you and stretch you and bring you into closer relationship with him? Would any of you be able to articulate um, how you've been changed since that trip? So when I first went, when I first went, I didn't care about the people out there. I thought, okay, somebody else is going to be out there and sharing the gospel, and they're going to do it, so I don't have to. It's fine. Somebody else will come and tell them. And it really opened my eyes. These people might not have another chance. And when we came home that first day, there were a lot of people saying, my heart hurts. It hurts very much. And I came back that first day and I was like, why doesn't my heart hurt? Why did God not put it on my heart to be sad? And I realized that I was comparing myself a little too much to the other people in our group. And God didn't give us all different hearts to compare them. And my heart was angry that I didn't care. That people get too comfortable in your faith and you just don't you don't want to go out and share because you think that there's another person out who, there who's going to. And it really turned my heart around and said, that person might not have another chance, even though they might see 50,000 people in a day. And it, it really brought me back to Jesus in such a way that I never thought I would. So I feel like God has worked in my life through that trip in introducing me to a different type of brokenness and sin that I've never seen before. And um, after seeing that sin, I feel like I've developed a heart for those people and knowing that every, every single person should hear the good news of Jesus and what he's done for us and knowing that there's another way than what they were turning to, to, you know, a different way to live your life than what they were doing. I feel like God showed me how perfect he creates all of us like we all had the right like all of our jobs were different we had encouragers we had people who were sharing the gospel we had people who were willing to help like we all had certain jobs that just helped us out and also I feel like God showed me the power of prayer because like the night before we just prayed for opportunities to share the gospel and God gave us just that you guys don't have to answer this question on microphone but I'm, I'm curious for the church would you guys go back and do it again um, I've got a couple more folks I want to invite to the stage as well. So Miss Susie and Mr. Dan. Miss Susie was a part of our team that joined us on the ground. Um, Dan wasn't, but both of these folks, I'd love to hear from their perspective. They are both parents um, that made the decision to send their kids on this trip to participate and be a part of what God was doing there. And so I thought it might be helpful for the church, um, certainly to get to hear our team members and our students' heart. And thank you guys so much for sharing that so well. Um, but also to get to hear from a parent's perspective, the why behind why did you send your kids and why did you not come in a helicopter um, once we got our specific marching orders um, to come and pull them out. Could I get you 
you guys to share your your heart and just your perspective on, on the why from a, a parent's point of view? Um, so thankfully, with our team here that we have at church, we um, were able to know a little bit about the city and about the Dream Center before we left. We were given that information. Um, I shared with both the kids and Scott what we were going to be doing. Like Michaela said, none of us knew the in-depth details, but we were aware on the front end that it was going to be like something we'd never seen before. And so there was a lot of prayer that went in ahead of time. Um, and mostly it was just faith, faith that Jesus Christ had us there for a reason. Not one single person on this team was there by accident, and we all talked about that on, on the front end. Um, but also I trusted Travis. Um, I trusted the Dream Center. And, of course, we, you know, we just had faith that Jesus knew exactly where we were supposed to be. And I also knew that if any point Travis thought we were unsafe or Ryan or John or Teresa, if any point we felt unsafe for the Dream Center, they were going to pull us out. And there was never a moment where we felt unsafe. And um, like I said, just the faith that the Lord had us exactly where we were supposed to be. Uh, so for, for me, um, it, it, it kind of boiled down to two things. Uh, first, I wanted my children to understand that missions isn't about safety. Uh, the primary purpose of missions is to bring the gospel to those who need it. And uh, many times in our, in our society, you know, much of us, we, we live in comfort. Uh, we live in relative peace. And we don't really understand uh, what it means uh, in some people's lives uh, to hear that maybe for the first time and to... Uh, be impacted in the way that uh, that some of these folks would be impacted. And that ties into that second piece, which is I wanted my children to experience the natural, uh, the natural result of sin and the impact that it has. Uh, and that's another thing that we, we often are sheltered from. Uh, the world tries to make, uh, tries to make sin look very appealing, uh, tries to make it look like something very desirable, but in the end, uh, it, it, the results are always the same. And it's one thing to hear that's the case, uh, but if you've never seen it, and it, it doesn't have the same impact. And so for those, uh, for, for in, in my case, for my children, for them to be able to see this is the impact of sin, and this is the hope of the gospel, and see that in real life, uh, it was completely worth whatever amount of risk they might have been undertaking. And uh, I, I think of the, the, the one thing that I, I thought of the most was Paul giving his recounting of the, the, the difficulties that he went through and all of the, you know, the shipwrecks and the beatings and all this stuff. And I thought to myself, if I... If I am raising my children for the purpose of keeping them safe uh, and, and having an easy life, what am I raising them for? As we wrap up this time, so I have a feeling um, that there may be some more lingering questions. I've had a couple of people ask me if this was an open Q&A, um, so you could ask questions. It's not, just for sake of time. Um, but. But you guys have seen you guys have seen the students. Um, a few up on stage and several that are in our congregation um, right now this morning. Um, you guys have seen that team, and so I would encourage you if you've got questions and, and are wrestling with the heart, especially behind the why, um, to pull one of us aside. Um, I know that any one of us would be excited to get to talk about what God did um, through the projects and certainly through His Spirit during that week. So I would encourage that in you. Um, let me conclude this time before we pray um, by saying how proud I am of all of you um, that came and participated in that trip and how proud I am to be a part of a church that values this kind of thing, um, that um, our, our sending church as Brookwood um, for seeing the need in projects like this and for being willing to support and send folks out um, to do that work. And so I want to say thank you to you guys for that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Would you guys join me as we close this time out with just a time of prayer over Kensington, over the people there, um, as we um, end this chapter um, on mission there this, this summer? Um, Father, we, we pause. Um, Father, this summer has been, in many ways, um, centered around 
prayer, um, God wrestling with the question, how much does it matter? How much does it value to you? And how much ought it value to us? Um, and so, Father, we, we set time now aside to pray. Um, God, praising you for everything that you did in Kensington um, through the week. Um, Father, certainly for safety and for sustenance, Father, and for keeping us going in, in many different realms. Um, but, Father, also for the leaning back and the trusting in the, the fact that you had our backs and that you were um, working for your good and for the sake of the gospel um, there in that area. God, we thank you for 15 missionaries that said yes to the call, um, knowing um, part of the danger of what it was going to look like, um, but still sold out for the purpose of going and making disciples and sharing the hope of the gospel um, to folks that are in such a spiral of addiction um, that it's almost unreal, Father. Um, right now, we, we think um, of the folks that we had a chance to come in contact with. Um, God, I think of, of Wallace, um, specifically just in my heart and mind, uh, that I had a chance to talk with and know that there are many more represented from other members of our team. God, we pray for them. Um, Father, we pray that as the result of those conversations the laying out of the gospel, that you would continue to stir, God, through your spirit in their soul, urging them toward salvation, urging them toward a way out of brokenness, Father, um, that's real, a hope that's real, um, a hope that's centered in the hope of the gospel. And so, Father, we, we lay our hearts on the table and we pray that you would do great things in that area. And, and Father, we pray for us as a church that you would continue to move and stir in our hearts. God, help us, helping us to understand what missions is, the importance of it, God, the critical importance importance of it. And God laying some of the things um, that we're not comfortable laying down in order to run to those that are in need. Um, Father, may Brookwood very much be a church known for that. Father, we love you. We thank you for the fact that you are awesome and trustworthy in all things. And we pray all of these things in your name. Amen.